previous lesson, we looked at expanding and simplifying radicals. Now we're going to look at adding and subtracting them. So for adding and subtracting radicals, the key things are that they can be combined into a simpler expression if both the degree and the radicand are the same. So we looked at those terms in the previous lesson, but I'm just going to go through them again here. So looking at the first example, we have 2 times the cube root of 5 plus 4 times the cube root of 7. So looking at the numbers under the radical sign, we have the cube root of 5 and the cube root of 7. So in this case, the radicands are not equal. So it doesn't simplify. Second example, we have 2 times the cube root of 5 plus 4 times the square root of 5. So there's no value written in the index of our radical sign, so we assume that it's a 2. In the first example, it's a 3. These degrees are not equal, so therefore we cannot combine them into a simplified expression. Now, going on to the final one, we have 2 times the cube root of 5 plus 4 times the cube root of 5. Well, degrees are the same. That's a match. And the radicands are the same. That's a match. So how does this simplify? We're going to take the two coefficients. We're going to add them together. And the radicals themselves will not be changed. So adding these up, this is 6 times the cube root of 5. If you want to think about it conceptually, it's really no different than if we were doing this. 2x plus 4x. So 2x plus 4x, well, clearly, that's just 6x, right? That's algebra you would have looked at extensively in previous grades. Well, just think about if we had x equal to the cube root of 5. Do you see how these two are exactly the same? If we substitute cube root of 5 with x in the expression above, we just end up with the expression below. So when the degrees and the radicands are the same, we just add the coefficients together, and that's how we can simplify adding and subtracting radicals. Let's take a look at a few examples now. All right, question number one. Simplify the following expression. So I'm not going to read the whole thing out. You can see the expression here. Now we have six different terms. Some of these can combine. Some of them cannot combine. So how are we going to determine which ones can and cannot combine? We're going to look at the radical portion of the expression. And if the degree and the radicand are the same, we can combine them. So looking at our first one, we have the cube root of 5. Checking through every other term in this expression, there are no other cube roots of 5. So there's not going to be any simplification when it comes to that. So I'll just write it on its own. 2 times the cube root of 5. So that portion does not simplify. Okay, let's take a look at our next term in this expression. 4 times the root of 5. Well, the root of 5 is present in several other expressions. What are we going to get when we add them together? Well, we're going to take their coefficients. So we have negative 4 times the root of 5. We have negative 3 times the root of 5. And we have a positive 1 times the root of 5. So negative 4 subtract 3 is a negative 7. Plus 1 is a negative 6. So perhaps I was hasty for this. So we have negative 6 times the root of 5. So we took the coefficients that were in front and just added them all together. And we have 7 times the cube root of 7. We have 10 times the cube root of 7. They have the same degree and the same radicand, so they can be combined together. What we're going to do is add the coefficients. So we have 7 plus 10. So this gives us 17 times the cube root of 7. So that is our simplified expression for question 1. So we just look through for degrees and radicands, which are exactly the same, and those can be combined into simplified expressions by adding together the leading coefficients.
Question 2. So we're going to simplify the following expression. 2 root 40 minus 5 root 50 plus 7 root 32. Now at first glance it seems that this expression can't be simplified at all. After all, each of these expressions has a different radicand. But these radicals have not been simplified. So we have to first simplify them to see if they have the same radicand in simplest form. Let's start with the number 40, since that's our first radicand. My preferred method of simplifying this is by prime factorization, which I displayed in the previous video. So 40 is the same thing as 4 times 10. 4 can be broken down into the prime numbers 2 times 2, and 10 can be broken down into the prime numbers 2 times 5. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 gives us 40. So that's the prime factorization of the number 40. Let's look at 50 next. Prime factorization of 50. Well, 50 is the same thing as 5 times 10. 5 is already a prime number, which cannot be further simplified. But 10 is not a prime number. It's 2 times 5. So there's our prime factorization for the number 50. 5 times 2 times 5. And finally, let's do our prime factorization for 32. So two numbers that multiply together to give us 32. 4 times 8 would work. 4 can be broken down into two prime numbers, 2 times 2. 8 can be broken down into 2 times 4. And to finish this, while most of these values are prime, 4 is not. So we end up with 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 2 to the fifth. And we can check any of these out if we plug any of these expressions into a calculator and multiply them together, we should end up with the value that was at the top of these factor trees. Okay, so there's our three prime factorizations. How can we use that to help us see whether this expression can be simplified further and to further simplify each of these radicals at the same time? So I'm going to start with our first term. So 2 times the root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Our second term was subtract 5 times the root of 50, which is 5 times 2 times 5. And our final term was plus 7 times the root of 2 to the 5th. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. These are all square roots. So I'm going to look for pairs of values inside the radical sign and look to take one of those pairs out. So in our first expression, we have a pair of twos. So we can write that out and multiply it by the co coefficient, which was already there. In our second term, we have a pair of fives. So we can take that out from under our radical sign. So that's equal to five times five now. And in our final term, we have one pair of twos, and we have a second pair of twos, but we don't have another value to simplify this final two with, so it's going to have to stay under the radical sign. Okay, so let's rewrite the simplified radicals that we have come up with here. So two times two is four, so this is 4 times the root of 2 times 5, so 4 times the root of 10. Our second term was 5 times 5, which is 25, times the root of 2. And our third term, 7 times 2 times 2, so I believe that gives us 28 times the root of, and the only value left under the radical sign was a 2. So here are our three terms, and we do have two terms which have the same degree and the same radicand, so those two will be able to be combined. So 4 root of 10 cannot be combined or simplified, but the two expressions I've underlined in yellow can. To do this, we're just going to add or subtract the coefficients in front of our radical expression. So 28 minus 25 gives us 3. So 4 root of 10 plus 3 root of 2 is the final fully simplified expression. 
Our final problem. So we want to simplify the following expression. So 10 times the root of 75c cubed minus 5c times the root of 12c. With the restriction c greater than or equal to 0, note that this will ensure that the values underneath our radical symbols will always be positive. OK, let's take the two natural numbers here and not worry about the variables yet and figure out what their prime factorizations are going to be. So 75 simplifies to 3 times 25. 3 is prime. 25 is 5 times 5. So there's our prime factorization of 75. Now let's do the same thing for the number 12. So 12 would be 6 times 2. 6 is the same thing as 3 times 2. 2 is already a prime. So there are our prime factorizations. So with that in mind, let's rewrite the original expression. So we have 10 times the root of 3 times 5 times 5. Now we also had c cubed under the radical sign. And c cubed is the same thing as saying c times c times c. Now our second portion to this was 5c times the root of, so we had 3 times 2 times 2, and don't forget that there was also a c that was left over. Now we want to take out pairs since this is a square root. I have two fives under the square root symbol, so we can take that out. And we also have a c under the square root symbol. So c times c, so we can take out a factor of c. Looking at the term on the right, the second term, there are a pair of twos. So that can come out from under the radical symbol. The three and the c, there's not a pair of them being multiplied together under the radical symbol. So they're going to stay and not be able to be factored out. All right. So c times 5 times 10. Well, 5 times 10 is 50, with the variable c left over. And typically, we write the variable after the real number. Looking under our radical symbol, we had 3 and c. For the second term, 2 times 5, so this is 10c. Looking under the radical, we have 3 and c. So now, note here that we have the same radicand of 3c. We have the same degree. So that means these two coefficients can be added or subtracted from each other. So 50c subtract 10c will give us 40c. And what's left over? we have the root of 3c. So the simplified expression would be 40c times the root of 3c. So there's an overview for adding and subtracting radical expressions. Just be certain in every case that you first simplify the radical as much as you possibly can each term in the radical expression. Simplify it first before you determine whether or not the terms can combine together by having the same radicand and the same degree.